Welcome back everyone. Hope you're having a great day. I have a story here from my friend Garth McMurtry. He um, read some stories about the buzzard and um, well, he'll tell you in his own words. And it's from the Native American Tales. I'd like to tell a story that is a creation story by the native people of what is now North America. I must give credit to the thousand year oral tradition that invented this story, but of the several versions I have read, I feel that it stops short of the end. I'd like to retell the story and add my own spice and an ending that seems to explain a very unique buzzard habit. I recently picked up some buzzard feathers and then accidentally discovered this story online. The story explains a lot, but it doesn't explain it all. You may have seen turkey vultures or buzzards, as they are called in the US, standing on a branch of a tree with their wings spread, soaking up the morning sunshine. Well, this is why. Long ago, birds didn't have any clothes. They were naked and shy and hid and shivered in the cold. One day, they all got together and held a great council to talk about this problem they all shared and to see if they could find a solution. It was decided that one must go to Creator and ask Creator for clothes. Creator lived in the sun. It was far away and very high. Many birds volunteered to be the messenger, but the council chose Buzzard to be the one because with his great wings, he could fly high and far like no other. The council thought Buzzard had the highest chance of being successful in reaching Creator. All the birds were a twitter with excitement as Buzzard prepared for his great trip. They sent him off with great celebrations and a lunch pail full of all the good things he liked to eat. Buzzard flew higher and higher with his great wings. After flying all morning, he got hungry and ate the food the other birds had packed for him. It was a delicious lunch and he appreciated their help and support very much and flew on with renewed energy. He flew on and on closer and closer to the sun and creator. It was so much work. He was very proud of his strength and he flew on, but eventually he got hungry again. And then he got very hungry. Below by the river, he spotted a dead fish rotting on the river bank. He was so hungry that he flew down to it. It was rotted and smelled bad, but he was so committed to his mission that he ate it to renew his strength. With great pride and renewed vigor, he flew on until he finally reached Creator's Lodge. Welcome, Buzzard, said Creator. Here is some food and some drink. Please satisfy yourself after your long journey. I have heard the prayers of your friends and I have prepared a wonderful box of clothes for you that we can look through when you are rested. Buzzard ate the wonderful food and drank the wonderful drink. It was the most satisfying and the most delicious food and drink he had ever had. Suddenly, he felt wonderful and powerful and ready to look through the box of clothing. Beautiful Buzzard, said Creator. This is the box of clothing that I have prepared for you and your friends. Since you have been chosen to fly so far to greet me, I give you the first choice of all these clothes. Try each one on. If you like it, keep it. If you don't like it, take it off and drop it down to your friends for someone else to have. Buzzard was very excited to start looking through the box of clothing. The first red suit he tried on was bright red with a stylish pointed hat. He put it on and strutted back and forth Oh, he said, this hat is a little itchy. So he took it off and dropped it to his friends. Cardinal picked it up and put it on and loved it. The next suit was blue and shiny, also with a stylish hat. He tried it on also, but he decided against suits with hats and threw it down and Jay grabbed it with glee. He tried on a more subtle suit with a dark gray coat and a bright red breastplate. 
Oh, this one doesn't match so well, he said, and dropped it down so Robin could have it. Suit after suit he tried on, and there was always something he didn't like about them. For goodness sakes, he thought, I get first pick, so I need to choose the nicest suit. Buzzard was so engaged in finding the most beautiful suit that he didn't notice that the box was getting toward the bottom. He picked up a suit with shaggy, dull black feathers. After he picked it up, he noticed that it was the last one in the box. Oh, he said as he looked at Creator, this is the last suit. Yes, said Creator, it's the one for you. You will look beautiful in it. Buzzard tried it on, but instead of magically fitting like all the others did, it was a little small. He pulled and strained and hunched his shoulders and pushed his head up so hard that the suit tore and left his head and neck sticking up still bald. You are beautiful, Creator exclaimed. Buzzard wasn't so sure. He thought about all the other suits he had tried on and all the bright colors and decorations they had, and he wasn't so happy with this suit. It was his now, so with another deep drink of Creator's Nectar, he headed back home. As he flew, he was amazed at how well his new feathers bore him up into the wind. He suddenly loved flying and discovered that he was able to fly most of the way home without any effort. His new feathers bore him up so that he was able to glide almost all the way home. As he passed the river, he noticed the fish still lying on the river bank. He flew down to get some lunch. As he wiped his mouth after eating, he thought how nice it was that he could eat stinky fish without mussing up his new suit. As he tasted the rotted fish, it reminded him of the wonderful strength the fish had given him during his long flight toward the sun. The dead meat made him feel strong and important. Back home, the other birds were waiting for him. They saw him far away. That's him, said Robin excitedly. No, it can't be, said Crow. It must be a leaf in the wind. Its wings aren't moving. All the other birds started talking at once about the amazing thing they were seeing. It appeared to be Buzzard, but he was flying without flapping. Buzzard swooped low over the crowd, did a fast high-speed turn, and landed in their midst with only a single flap at the end to break his speed. The others burst into a loud cheering and surrounded him with love and appreciation for the great suits he had given them all talking at once about his great flying skills, his beauty, and his bravery. Of course, all the other birds naturally assumed that he had chosen his suit over all the others and believed he was very proud of it. They praised him endlessly for his beauty, his bravery, and his flying skill. They were up way into the night telling stories and praising Buzzard, Buzzard completely forgot about his disappointment with his suit and began to believe that he was the most beautiful bird of all of them. He finally went to bed completely grateful and in love with Creator for giving him such a wonderful suit. Every morning now, Buzzard wakes up early and flies high into the tree. He spreads his wings to the sun to show Creator how proud he is of his beautiful, wonderful suit. The end. What a beautiful story. Thank you for listening. Please subscribe and tell your friends.